Okay, 5.4, we're gonna talk about writing equations in standard form. So just a quick review, we've talked about slope intercept form, that's the y equals mx plus b. We've talked about the point slope form, when you know the slope and a point on the line that the line goes through. And now we're gonna be talking about the standard form more, so that's the ax plus by equals c form. Now just a quick note, generally we start with the slope intercept or the point slope form, and then we rearrange it and put it into the standard form. Now the key to putting it into the standard form is you want the variables on the left side of the equal sign, okay, and the number on the right. And then you want the a value, this coefficient in front of the x, to be positive, and you want a, b, and c all to be integers, meaning, you know, nice round numbers, okay? So let's take a look at an example. So here they're giving us the slope is a half, and they give us the point two comma three. So do you think we should start off with the slope intercept form or the point slope form? Okay, if you said the point slope form, you're absolutely right because we've got the point. Okay, so that makes it easy. We've got the slope, and so we can write it just like that. Okay, it just takes a half a second. But now we want to rearrange it into the standard form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the one half. So that's one half x minus one equals y minus three. Now, what we want to do is we want to get the variables on the left, numbers on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the one half x from both sides. Okay, so let's do that. So we have negative one half x uh, plus y minus three equals negative one. We want the numbers on the right, so I'm gonna do the opposite of subtracting three. I'm gonna add three to both sides, so that's two. So let's look at what we have so far. Now, we've got the variables on the left, numbers on the right, but we want all the uh, coefficients to be integers. So we want a, b, and c to be integers. This is not an integer, it's uh, negative one half. So what do you think we can multiply by to make this an integer? Okay, well, if you said two, you're absolutely right. And then also, we don't want this to be negative. So let's multiply through everything by a negative two. If we do that to the left, the right sides of the equation, that's an equivalent equation. It's still gonna be the same line. It's just gonna be in a slightly different form. So that's gonna be x minus two y equals negative four. And the nice thing about the standard form is it's, it's easy on the eyes, right? It's easy to read. You've got the variables on the left, numbers on the right, nice round numbers, integers, it starts off with a positive number. Nice, neat form of the equation of a line, as opposed to this. This is functional, but it's not as condensed and easy to read as this is, right? So let's go over to number one. So it says, write an equivalent equation, that's a, a tongue twister, in standard form. So write an equivalent equation in standard form. So what do you think? What would be another possible way of writing the equation of this line? Well, there's an infinite number of possibilities. As long as we multiply everything by the same number, I'm going to multiply by three, we get an equivalent form of the line. So if we were to graph this, there'd be the exact same line. You can multiply by two. Want to learn Algebra 1? Check out my Learn Algebra 1 video course for sale, where we go through 87 video lessons that take you step by step by step through Algebra 1. We talk about the important concepts, formulas, and we go through numerous example problems together to help you learn Algebra 1. Click the interactive card or the link in the description below to take you over there to get started with some of the free lessons. In the meantime, let's continue on with this video. You can multiply by two, by you know 10, whatever you want. Uh, you'll get the same uh, equivalent form. So write it in standard forms. Now this one, they're giving us a point and a slope, very similar to what we did over here. So do we start with the slope intercept, point slope, or standard form? Well, we want to eventually end up in standard form. What do you think? See if you can do this one on your own. Well, if I was gonna do it, I'd start off with the point slope form. So I'd do y minus negative one equals the slope, which is two thirds times x minus x one. When you subtract, it's like adding the opposite. I'm going to, you know what I'm gonna do? is I'm gonna multiply through everything by three to get rid of that fraction, okay? So if I multiply this entire equation by three, that comes out to three y plus three equals two, because see these threes cancel, x minus five. Now you don't want to multiply the x and the five. This is all one group. So I'm just multiplying the two thirds times three. Okay, now we've gotten rid of the fractions. I'm going to distribute. So this is two x minus 10 equals three y plus three. I'm going to subtract two x. I'm going to subtract three from both sides. Almost there, we've got uh, all the variables on the left, numbers on the right. We've got integers, but we wanted us to start with a positive a value, the number in front of the x. So what can we multiply by to make this positive? Well, if you said negative one, you're absolutely right. So let's multiply through everything by negative one. That's gonna make this two x minus three y equals 13. And you can see that's our standard form. Perfect. 
Okay, let's look at number three. Now this one, they give us two points, four comma negative one and six comma nine. So the key thing here is we're gonna have to figure out what is the slope and then I probably would use the point slope form again, either using this first point or the second point to put it in point slope form, then we can rearrange it into the standard form. So let me go ahead and do that. So we've got uh, y2 minus y1, so that's nine minus negative one over x2 minus x1, so that's 10 over two, because remember subtraction is like adding the opposite, that gives us a slope of five. So I'm gonna use this point right here, so y minus negative one is y plus one equals the slope times x minus x1. We've got it in point slope form, we just have to rearrange it into the standard form. So I'm gonna distribute, that's five x minus 20. I'm going to subtract five x from both sides. I'm gonna subtract one from both sides, okay? I'm gonna multiply through everything by negative one, so that's five x minus y equals 21. Now we've got it in the standard form, and uh, that's what they wanted. Okay, number four, write an equation of the horizontal and vertical line through the point negative two, five. So a lot of times what I like to do is just draw a diagram so I can kind of visualize what's happening here. So negative two, five is right about there. Okay, now if we wanna find a horizontal line, that's gonna be a line that looks like that, right? And one thing that you're gonna notice, and we talked about this in a previous lesson, and that's the nice thing about this course in algebra and math in general, is we tend to cycle through some of the same ideas to reinforce them so that you can memorize them, right? So do you remember this from an earlier uh, section? What's the equation of this horizontal line? Well, notice no matter what the x value is, so even if x is 10, what's y equal to? Five, right? If x is negative 10, what's y equal to? Five. So the horizontal line, I'll just put it right here, is y equals five. Now what about the vertical line through the same point? Well, you can see no matter what y is, if y is negative five, x is negative two. If y is positive five, x is negative two. So the vertical line is gonna be x equals negative two. These are special cases. These are cases where you just have one variable, okay, as opposed to an x and a y. So that way when you see just one variable like that, you know it's gonna be a vertical or horizontal line. So let's look at the last uh, question, a word problem, of course, right? We need to practice our story problems. You can buy coconut water in small containers for a dollar or large containers for three dollars. Write an equation that shows the number of coconut waters you can buy for twenty dollars. Okay, so this is kind of an easy problem. It's oftentimes referred to as a linear combination. We talked about this earlier in the course, but let's just go ahead and say that this is, uh, let's see, one X plus three Y equals 20. So you can see this is in standard form. The variables are on the left, numbers are on the right. And it makes sense. If you buy four small coconut waters, that's four times one is $4. If you buy three large ones, that's three times three, that's $9. You know, uh, basically you have the price times the quantity, price times the quantity equals the total. And you know, you can write that word equation like we were talking about earlier in this course, write kind of like a verbal model and then you can go into an algebraic model like we're doing right here. But uh, that's the basic idea and uh, that wraps up this section. I'll see you in the next lesson.